you read that headline, you're like, oh, we're probably good. I can skip reading that, right? Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I've been stoned, joined every week by Jill, Brian, and everybody watching this. We're just chatting about melting RAM in the pre-show. If you want to go watch that, uh, it'll be up later for patrons in the live and uncut podcast or uh, go check out our yeah. uncut channel over on YouTube. It'll be out a week later for everybody else. What's up? What's new? Jill is uh, trying to imitate me, which is I, I consider yeah. <laughs> the most sincere um, bit of flattery. Trying trying to uh, emulate my vocal stylings, are you? Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could get as low as you've been. You have no, you don't. I hate hearing this. I like. I wish. (laughs) Trust me. I'm like. I just wish I could talk into. I listen to people talk on, like doing YouTube videos and stuff like. I'm like. I bet that's so easy. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. So I've been sick. So everyone, excuse my scratchy throat, and that's what Vin's talking about. I'm a little bit lower today. (laughs) I usually am. (laughs) But for me, it's like. Being a high soprano, uh, it takes a lot to get even lower than I can't even get ne- anywhere near Ven's baritone voice. <laughs> this is not that bad, Joe. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Don't worry, I- I'll pitch shift you so you'll be like, rrr, 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 rrr. yeah, <laughs> man. Uh, so I think the thing just showed up. I'm still in the process of um, torturing. I, I got that HP Elite desk in the basement Yay. tied down to a chair. I'm like, you're cheap enough to where it doesn't matter if I break you. Let's find out where you break. Doing all the things, answering all the questions that I have. Getting Linux on it, I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler. Not too bad. There's a couple of steps, but I know people are going to be concerned about, hey, man, how does this compare against, you know, a Raspberry Pi 4 or 5? For power usage so i'm getting some tests with that because it's got a couple of modes and surprisingly i didn't expect this for the power modes it's got the uh like i'm gonna do everything in my power i'm gonna turn myself into like a uh, neurotic little laptop with no battery mode oh, which is okay. pretty good yeah pretty good but it's also got something that i was not expecting is something i do in all the boxes in the studio effectively just disabling c states which just tells the cpu just like run at full clock constantly oh, okay. don't throttle yeah. don't try to do frequency scaling just go it's got that mode in there i'll show you how to get to that um oh, cool pretty fun got the extra ram so we're going to be able to see single channel dual channel for like if you want this is like a legitimate desktop computer too for the price i'm it, it's a lot of fun information and it seems to really not mind linux all that much so stay tuned for that that'll be over on interfacing linux mm. In the upcoming weeks, I'm not, <laughs> I've learned, I've learned not to say next week. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and get into the news of the week. Oh yeah. Speaking of Raspberry Pi, I, I put that in our discord, the Raspberry Pi IPO initial public offering. They're going to go public. They're, they're, they're going to go, um, they're, mm-hmm. yeah, man. <laughs> like they're not going to be like the little private company. Then they, they want to get all Hollywood and mainstream on us. And I don't know what to think about yeah. that. Different times, times are changing. Yeah, Let we've been know. talking about that for a while now. So I I posted the information exciting. from the London Stock Exchange this morning in Discord. I'm like, this is they're doing it now. Um Yeah. And they 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 decided to go with the London Stock Exchange instead of the um New York Stock Exchange, which is kind of interesting because ARM decided to go that route. We'll see what is going to be in store for our friends over at Raspberry Pi. But let's uh Good news, everybody. Let's talk about what's changing in Firefox. Better insights, same privacy. You read that headline, you're like, oh, we're probably good. I can skip reading that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Until you read about what, what it's, <laughs> it, the article's actually yeah, I, about. <laughs> I read the headline. It sounds fine, Jill. I, no, yeah. the, the Firefox <laughs> is great. So what's yeah, new in know. Firefox's approach to search data? Well, opt out data collection. That's right. Uh, To quote, we're ramping up our efforts to enhance search experiences by developing new features like Firefox Suggest, which provides recommended online content that corresponds to queries. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way because I really want corporations to stop pretending that data collection is for my benefit. 
Like, yeah, guys, it's not. Stop. We're not that dumb. Okay. And it's like, we're really trying to help you out. I'm like, no, you're not. I don't care who you are. So a couple of things about this. Uh, this is only going to be available in the U S so that is usually a good indicator. Like make of that what you need to. I'm like, yeah, probably because I couldn't get away with doing this in the EU, like yeah. a lot of other companies. However, they do provide a step-by-step -step guide for disabling the latest bit of data collection in your Firefox. And this is going to be the new version of Firefox that you download. And while you're doing that, you probably also want to disable like the sending performance data, the telemetry that's on in Firefox while you're in there. And uh, there's actually like a whole slew of stuff that you got to dig into the about config in Firefox to completely wipe out what you can. Uh, Cause those checkboxes in the uh, UI are just the tip. But here's what I want, Firefox. Does this really bother me? I'm like, eh, whatever. I mean, data collection is data collection. I spin it. I mean, somebody will definitely like jump up and try to white knight and be like, but, but, but it's different because everybody else does it. I'm like, yeah, but Firefox was being cool, man. Uh, can we get a blog post from Firefox outlining their plans for staying competitive and innovating on the web browser? That, that's the next post I want to read from the Firefox blog about them doing yeah. cool stuff, not we, we need to data mine and figure this stuff out, man. This is going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. And this is also going to cause a lot of people to get really defensive about why I guarantee you in the upcoming weeks, people will somehow try to defend this saying, well, it's okay when they do it. And I'm like, that's always a bad argument. You're always on the wrong side when you're doing that argument, but you do to you. However, I want to see how long it takes for somebody to bring up Arkin Fox, Libra Wolf, or like Water Fox, because that, you know, as soon as you're like, because those are like the ultra hyper mm -hmm. privacy focused uh, Chromium and Firefox based browsers. Uh, this is not all doom and gloom. I don't think, I don't think you need to get, uh, like, you know, everything's burning down. That's something you can disable. The only thing I take issue with, and it's not Firefox is with anybody is making stuff like this opt out. Cause this is opt in by default. You need to go turn this off if you don't want those data bits collected. Now, maybe you can say to yourself, oh, well, I'm trying to help out Firefox. We don't know what they're doing with the data. Also keep that in mind. But like with me, I don't care. Like I got all the telemetry and stuff like cut on. I'm like, <laughs> whatever, fine. So what about mm -hmm. you, Joe Bryant? Oh uh, yeah, I think? was actually a bit befuddled by this as well, especially since lately Firefox, you know, they've actually been more focused on the user browser experience in their last few iterations. They've done a lot of improvements. And um, I guess to their defense, they are going to, try and do this as securely as possible and as privately as possible. But data collection is data collection at the end of the day. <laughs> so, you know, I've always actually loved how easy it is to change the default search engine right in the URL bar in Firefox. So maybe Mozilla could make it easier to opt out of data collection in the same location and just, you know, have a little button or something clicked op opt out. Yeah. Or just like Ven was saying, opt out by default, and then you can go back and opt in if you want to help them out with data collection. I don't know. Uh, maybe, you know, I, I want to say slippery slope, but again, when I, when I read stuff like this, I'm like, this is fine. Why, why don't we go, go back focusing on your core product, please? Yeah. Please. Like this, I, I don't see how this helps Firefox become a better browser. Because there's already stuff in Firefox, like the sponsored tab things with recommendations. Sandboxing. Like, I don't know, man. Yeah. Searching privately. <laughs> We've been around too long, Joe. We, we watched yeah. all the good stuff turn not so good. Oh, who knows? Who knows? I got, you know, I use Firefox on the desktop. This is not going to affect mobile for now, by the way. So you're still the guy. I just thought everybody needs to be aware of it. Something you need to be aware of as well as a very nice kernel release. Yeah, so Linus Torvalds has released Linux kernel 6.9, and it's full of improvements, fixes, and more awesome hardware support. So one of the, the improvements is on Intel-based machines. They will now boot faster with Linux now that Intel fast boot support 
is now included for older chipsets in the latest 6.9 kernel. This was previously enabled in the Linux kernel, but for Intel Skylake processors and newer. So now those of us who like to collect older computers <laughs> will get uh, this benefit of faster booting. And also AMD gets lots of love with AMD P-State preferred core support in the AMD P-State driver for AMD Zen 2 and later chips. And there is better support for ARM processors, including ARM64 Rust code support. And Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, had this to say. And I now have a more powerful ARM64 machine thanks to Ampere. So the last week I've been doing almost as many ARM64 builds as I have x86-64. And that should obviously continue during the upcoming merge window too. So that, that's pretty big Big news, we know that Linus has been working on ARM machines, and now we're getting more love in the kernel for ARM. And something Ven and I have talked about before, the EXT2 file system is now officially deprecated with this release. Wow, yeah, that's an end of an error. <laughs> and so the next Linux kernel released will be Linux kernel 6.10, will be a long-term support release. So that will be coming soon. But yeah, Linus said, of course, as he usually does, this, <laughs> this kernel uh, release is not that big a deal when it actually really is. <laughs> so, Probably the biggest takeaway I got from this is like, yeah. the, if you're unfamiliar with like Ampere <laughs> is um, like Ampere, they make like the super chonky arm boxes. Like, yeah. yeah. So I'm sure they were like, hey, it'd be really neat. Here's one. Go yeah, take it. here's and one. Yeah, whatever you do with it, we don't know. You know, you can use this as a doorstop, but it'd be really cool if you started playing around with it. And yeah, Linus being Linus, like any of us, is like, yeah, I'm gonna start playing around with that because it's an extraordinarily expensive desktop. And uh, it's good to see ARM, hopefully, or something smelling like ARM is going to be in our future. And I, I was reading this over at its FOSS, all the, all the links are going to be in our show notes. How do you install kernel 6.9? This makes me sad. How far we've fallen. Um, <laughs> Yeah, just like how far <laughs> we've fallen with this is like if, if you're supporting a rolling release, you wait for it to happen. Or if you don't, there's a guide to make on, on why to, to leave me a comment. When was the last time you compiled a kernel? I'm going to be compiling a kernel this afternoon and installed it. Yeah. Like this, 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 <laughs> this is a 15 minute operation at most. It's that knowledge like truly just gone for the average user mm -hmm. on Linux these days, like has the knowledge base of like, ooh, I'm not doing that. Why would I ever do that? I'm like, because I want to try out the new kernel. You know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to build some Debian packages and I'm going to install them on Debian 12 this afternoon and try it out for a thing. Yeah. Let Especially me know. since it's actually easier now than it ever has been. <laughs> Not if you've never built anything before. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know. Uh, like, that is the knowledge base I'm always curious about. Uh, and do we get further and further away from that? The more prevalent things like, uh, you know, things that make no sense to me, is like containerized desktop apps. And you're like, but I double click on the flat pack. Can I install the flat pack? Girl? I'm like, oh, God, no. Uh, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah. But Snapdragon, let's talk about big, chunky arms. Yeah. Rawr, speaking of arm. Big flex. <laughs> yeah. This comes from Qualcomm. They're going to be upstreaming Linux kernel support for the Snapdragon X Elite. That one. Yeah, that 12-core chonker we've been <laughs> hearing about. And I've been talking about it. I'm excited about it. Looks by the by the next LTS, we're looking at like uh, kernel 610, 611, somewhere in there. We're going to have actual support for this because they're sending this stuff upstream. Like, And like, how powerful are these chips? These chips are just like a little behind a uh, current day iPad with the new Apple... Um, SOC in them, the M series, not like your old dumpy iPads, like the iPad Pros. Video, they're working on video decoding, uh, the camera power, open firmware, boot firmware, like the entire stack. Like they want to get all of this running just right out of the box. On Linux, these things aren't really available to get your hands on and play with just yet. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're talking like NVMe drives. And they want to make sure the battery mm -hmm. performance is good, suspend and resume, you know, sleep on the GPU parts, all that stuff. 
there's even an experimental disc image for, of course, Debian. Uh, if you want <laughs> to play around, if you somehow have your hands on the hardware right now, and uh, they're looking for contributors to come in and help on the um, kernel mailing list archive. If you want to do that, uh, that's that makes me excited because this is coming directly from Qualcomm. This isn't yeah. typically yeah. <laughs> we get something like this, you know, like people hacking on Broadcom type stuff for Raspberry Pi is still trying to get everything like a Raspberry Pi 5 booting with like a, a stock kernel. That's still not quite there yet. You know, you still need a custom kernel. Knowing that this is going to be out like this in the kernel, ready to go, is something to get excited about for our army Huge. future because this is not like a little, you know, this is not a Raspberry Pi 5. This is a desktop CPU mm -hmm. or SOC that you can like <laughs> legitimately get away with doing some stuff with. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be cheap, though. Oh, I, you're not going to get it for 75 bucks, but yeah, <laughs> we're going to be playing, paying Apple prices, I think for a bit, <laughs> probably, you know, you're probably going to see this first and, you know, like $2,000 laptop somewhere. In there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's almost guaranteed to be a better love story than, uh, windows on arm because windows is going to take another, you know, windows 11 is going to take another swing at being on arm again, you know, mm -hmm. working with Qualcomm to try to make this happen. And like that, did not take with Windows 10 when they tried that. Uh, yeah. And then we like what Joe was talking about. And like Linus has got an ARM machine these days. So. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's, <laughs> that was the point I was going to make is, you know, you know, as we talked about in the latest Linux kernel release 6.9, you know, Linus has an ARM machine now to build kernels on. And this is, uh, I'm sure it goes a long way to Qualcomm upping their support of the latest Snapdragon X Elite. <laughs> it just, it just, it just happened to coincide that these both these topics were on the same show, <laughs> and that that is going to be awesome. Right. And one thing I found interesting, Ven, is that they they said in the next six months, mm -hmm. one of the things they're working on is end to end hardware video decoding on Firefox and Chrome, mm -hmm. and that's excellent <laughs> that's <laughs> like to put a finer point on that yeah qualcomm's not just like here at booths ish go see mm -hmm. if you get like yeah they're working on system level stuff all the way up to user facing stuff like jill just at firefox yeah like they, they want this thing to be a slick smooth experience and i'm here for it good times <laughs> hey alexa okay google <laughs> Did Ven trigger any of your devices out there? Oh, people say they do, but they don't. <laughs> they, 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 who's like really like in 2024 is like, yeah, I had you on the loudspeaker in the house. And that, I'm like, no, you did. You just want to type that chat or you want to leave a comment. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about just another AI powered voice assistant. And you're like, oh, okay. Well, that, that looks sketchy and i'm like yeah it does but I, i'm down with it because this is the little pie segment that we like to do because this is a raspberry pi power one of course uh yeah make it so uh there there's mm -hmm. a it's not called pie card for no reason because there there's one pie card we all know <laughs> this runs entirely on your raspberry pi ai powered voice assistant and it doing anything a standard LLM can do, like chat GPT, conversations, and all the fun bits that you would expect. So what's different about it? Well, no internet connection is required. In addition, mm. if there's a camera equipped, you can also ask PyCard to take a photo, describe what it sees, like you, you can mess with it basically, and uh, even ask it questions about, hey, that thing I just showed you, what do you think that is? And it's like, it's a ham sandwich, then you can put the cat down. So, um... <laughs> You can even plug a speaker into it and it'll talk to you and you yeah. can talk to it. It uses a distributed model. So latency is a little on the high side right now. It is, uh, but it does run on a Raspberry Pi or again, no internet connection needed. And it will probably occasionally bring up Earl Grey tea. I'm not, I don't know that from experience. It's just a guess. <laughs> I think oh. that's pretty neat. Um, so cool. All we all we need is uh, Majel Barrett's Roddenberry's voice on it. <laughs> to, to, to Loxana Troy Troy to to uh, do all the speaking like in next gen. And I was thinking they have what's really fun is they have a wake up word you can use to 
um, activate it. And I would use engage or make it so as good as well. <laughs> and I was just thinking how funny this, this would be into to an exit uh, word could be arch, <laughs> you know, as a double meaning for Star Trek TNG to exit the holodeck and also for Linux. I use arch, by the way. I know that's silly. <laughs> You could probably build something kind of interesting with this. Like, if you look at the yeah. uh, homebrew version, let me open image and new tab. Jeez, 360 by. Yeah, that that's uh, that is definitely homebrew right there. You know, yeah, you, you got the pie cam like standing on like, now we got a little speaker plugged into it, but it does work. You could probably build a nicer uh, enclosure for it. And yeah, being able to do your own uh, trigger word is great because uh, this is one of the things I've never liked about like Google Assistant or Alexa is like, I, I want to be able to say operator. Why? Because that yeah. got my little brain thinking back in 1999 when I watched uh, The Matrix. There was this one scene mm -hmm. where uh, Neo and Trinity are like running on the top of a skyscraper and he's like, do you know how to fly that thing? And she's like, not yet. And she's like, operator. And I'm like, that's the future. There we go. And we kind of have there that right go. now, but we have the delay. Our bandwidth is really slow with operator because we still have to do the like brain to, you know, like mobile phone or search it. And then we have to read the information. And more and more and more where I can just be like, hey, tell me how to do the thing. Yeah. I'm down for I it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap us up for today. Thanks for hanging out. We do this live every Wednesday on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. There'll be a link down in the video description. If you want to come say hi, hop into the chat. All of our chats are linked together, our Discord, our um, IRC, and of course, Twitch chat is all live. And this conversation continues on over on General Disarraisin, our super secret uh, private channel for our Twitch subs and Patreon subscribers, but you guys already know that because you're there doing the thing. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, if you want to help us out, we'd appreciate it. Support the show, LinuxTeamCast.com forward slash support. we got Patreon, LibrePay, all the regular stuff, a bunch of rewards for Patreon stuff, like access to our Discord, but same way if you can kick some cheddar on Twitch, use that Bezo box, give it a try before you buy it. we got wish lists and a bunch of fun things. Just keep show free. And uh, yeah. there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. that's going to do it for episode 423 and speaking of them patrons yeah. let's go ahead and show them off in the let's credits thank our patrons our advisors omegas and our theron our executive producers barbrant scott m atomic mike g our chicago kicks people super dust down <laughs> empty blasphemy our sea monsters some of them dirty dean the craze frostclaw our Death Notes, Benjamin, Doom 2, Wad, Stephen B. Our Chairlings, Coma, Nick, Jason, Jolly, Man, Danielle. <laughs> I was trying to name people I hadn't, hadn't read in a while. <laughs> That's right, Stephen. The uh, last thing we need to close out on, donkeys. See you next week, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>